Okay, this is going to be the, the uh, third uh, video in the self-esteem series. Uh, and I'm continuing uh, from uh, the reading where we uh, left off from the last video. Um, I read a few different things, didn't necessarily cover uh, everything. Um, and, and part of it where it talks about uh, self-esteem as a need, and it says... Uh, Part of the reading where I read, and again, the reading's coming from uh, Nathaniel Brandon's uh, Six Pillars of Self Esteem. It says, To say that self esteem is a need uh, is to say, one, that it makes an essential contribution to the life process, that it is indispensable to normal and healthy development, that it has survival value. Okay, now on each one of these, in turn, so that it that it is essential, uh, that is an essential contribution to the life process, right? And so, as we when we have a healthy level of uh, uh, self esteem, right, it will um, motivate us to make uh, our decisions in a certain way, right? And it's going to be in a way that's going to help us to um, uh, live up again to our potential and to have a good and decent and successful life. And we will actually believe that these things are possible to, uh, to us, right? We will have that self-efficacy. Remember, self-efficacy is confidence in our competence, right? You, you, you believe that you are competent enough to uh, be successful in life, right? And then this other one, that it is indispensable to normal and healthy development, right? Normal and healthy development. We're talking about uh, normal and healthy, healthy development as a, uh, a human being, right? Whether you're uh, developing your business, but more in a more uh, general sense, the way that we develop as a person, as a man or a woman uh, or whatever you may be, right? Um, when you have a healthy level of self-esteem, not only um, do you respect yourself? You respect other people and you respect other people's property and such, right? When you have a, a uh, low level of self-esteem, you don't respect yourself. And if you don't respect yourself, it's going to be impossible for you to really be able to respect anyone else because you don't even, uh, number one, even really know what respect is in the first place. Um, and it will be easier for you to do uh, unspeakable things. Right. And, and when I say unspeakable things, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about a particular uh, 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 situation from a, vi a, a very disturbing video uh, that I, I watched on uh, uh, YouTube. Right. It was uh, talking about and you can look at you can look it up uh, the video and, and I had a title in front of me right now. But the the uh, video was about um, 10, 10 young people who. Uh, done like a home invasion and assaulted a mother and her son, sexually assaulted a mother and, and her son, 12 year old son. Right. And the, the things that they did were horrible. And these are all young people, most of them underage. So it was said that 10 people went into the house. They only were able to arrest, uh, 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 four. And apparently, uh, uh according to, uh, some of the comments that uh, karma caught up with one of the uh, a fifth individual that did not uh, get arrested where he was, uh, I, I believe they said 13 at the time of the offense. I'm not sure how old he was when when uh, when karma caught up with him, but apparently he was uh, ended up being shot and killed, I believe, maybe 10 minutes away from uh, the place where the original assault happened. And, and to my knowledge, it was not necessarily connected, right? And that's why I just say karma caught up with them, right? But again, these were all young people. And, um, and, and you know, and again, they talked about uh, their upbringing. They talked about uh, one of the, the, the young people had a, uh, 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 his mother had been uh, also sexually assaulted, uh, I think even weeks, maybe a month or a few weeks uh, prior to this incident occurring. And, uh, and, you know, it just talked about all the, just the, the bad uh, abuse that the, child, the kid had went through and stuff like that. Right. Now, 
regardless of these facts, we still make choices. These young people made choices. Right. To do the things that they did. Right. Just like when I was I was a young person, I, I got a life sentence, uh, 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 caught a case that got me a life sentence at the age of 17. Right. For being involved in certain activities. Right. And I made the decision that I made um, and I served 21 years for that. Right. For the decisions that I made. Right. And, and, and I could use some of the, I could try to use some of the same excuses. I didn't have a fair chance. Uh, my family didn't have money. Uh, the schools that I went to wasn't that great. Uh, uh, we were we uh, 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 the community was poor. The community didn't have a lot of after school programs and all that. I could I could say all of that and all of it would be true. But none of it was the reason why I did the things that I did. I did the things that I did because that's the lifestyle that I chose uh, to live. Right. I knew right from wrong. My parents were not criminals. My sister uh, is not and was not a criminal. Um, they had never, you know, been to prison and, and never engaged in the type of activities that I chose to engage in. Right. And, and, and again, get my sister grew up in the same household that I grew up in. And, and again, she didn't end up in prison and, and doing the things that I'd done. Right. Because she made different decisions. Right. She made her decisions differently. So I don't use my family, my uh, uh, financial status or anything else as an excuse as to why I did the things that I did. I look back on those things and I take personal responsibility for the things that I done. Right. And and and, and I uh, accept the consequences that I had to face for those things. And now. I'm here um, as a uh, uh, I don't I don't I I, I don't want to use a, uh, I don't want to use a term better person. I, I look at it more as I'm I'm here now as the person that I was actually meant to be. Right. I, I believe I believe that I believe that when we're born, uh, we're all born with a purpose. Right. And a good purpose. And 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 there is something in life. Uh, a purpose in life that we all have that we're meant to uh, contribute to our society, to our community. And, and some of us will ultimately uh, contribute whatever it is that we're supposed to contribute, or um, we're going to have a rough go at life. Right. And I believe that we're going to have that rough go because that rough go is, is, is trying to wake us up and to lead us to those things that are going to help us to be successful. Right. And uh, so, again, I made the decisions that I made and faced the consequences that I faced. Right. So these these young people, uh, 10 of them, they 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 are. Uh, and this was a horrible, horrible thing. I mean, and, and, and rape in any sense is, I believe, a, a horrible crime. And and, and I believe and in, in my opinion, uh, in a lot of ways, it is comparable or in, 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 in some sense, I believe uh, worse as far as the impact is concerned than murder, than murder. Right. Uh, and, and, and I know a lot of people would disagree with me. But again, the reason that I uh, say that is is because the, the victim of, of these type of crimes will continue to suffer throughout their life for the rest for the rest of their life. They will continue living. But many of them will will be impaired due to what happened uh, to them. Now, a lot of uh, the victim of these type of uh, situations are able to move past that to thrive and able to help other victims and become a uh, uh, they're able to use that situation to to make them uh, even better. Right. In their life. But it was still a horrible act. Right. And and and, you know, and even some people will say, well, God put me in this situation to teach me a lesson. And and I don't say that about any bad things. Like, I don't say that that uh, God or my creator put me in prison to educate me and to uh, 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 teach me to become a, uh, how to become a better person or so that I would become a better person. Again, I put myself in prison due to my decisions. My creator, if we're going to say uh, uh, 
that there was a spiritual cause for my change. My creator uh, uh, chose to use that as a learning experience for me, but it wasn't, uh, 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 my creator wasn't the reason that I ended up in prison. I ended up in prison because I made certain decisions, just as these young people uh, made certain decisions that put them, uh, uh, that led to their actions, regardless of their uh, conditions in life. And, and again, this situation, so brutal. Um, so again, they uh, 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 sexually assaulted uh, the mother, sexually assaulted the 12 year old son, made the, the, the mother, uh, uh, made the son have sexual intercourse uh, with the mother, uh, uh, sodomized the mother with the uh, assault rifle. Um, they uh, poured all kind of chemicals into the uh, 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 body parts uh, of the victims so that they could try to uh, uh, get rid of all the evidence. They had the intention uh, to burn, according to the reports, they had the intention to burn uh, both of the victims, like burn them alive to to uh, get, get rid of the evidence. Um, uh, this this that situation uh, was one of the worst things uh, that I've heard of uh, uh, acts performed by uh, young people in my uh, that I've that I've ever heard. And uh, and you know I went to the comments as I always do, and uh, and there was a lot of people, you know, saying that they should uh, uh, that all of them should have been eligible for the death penalty. Uh, I agree, but there are other comments that, you know, again, talked about, uh, that if society, uh, didn't, uh, put them in a position that they were in and, and, and created better conditions for them or more money was put into their community that they would not, uh, have, uh, done the type of things that they did. And, and this thought process, again, in my opinion, is just wrong, right? Although they do have a right to their opinion, right? And, and I support their right to have their opinion and to have an opinion different than mine. I don't agree with their opinion, but I support their right to have it. Uh, because I believe that these young people, underage or not, uh, made decisions to do what they did, what they did, right? And people have to suffer because of their decisions, and they should have to suffer uh, uh, because of their decisions, right? Just as I had to, dis I had to suffer because of my decisions. Um, and, and, and the only re I, the, the reason I include my, included myself uh, in, uh, in this is because I don't want to sit here. And, uh, I think that sometimes the type of the way that I talk and some of the things that I say, um, I could give the impression, um, that I'm a, a arrogant individual that think I'm better than someone else. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Right. I don't think that I'm better or worse than anybody else. But if I, if I, if I had to make, a Uh, let's say a determination, uh, and say whether I'm better or worse than anybody else, I would have said worse again, based on the actions, uh, the things that I've done and that I chose to do in my life, the way that I've lived my life. And the fact that, um, I never took advantage of the, the, uh, took advantage of in a good way. Because again, a lot of times we say take advantage of something, we think of it in a negative. Um, I never took advantage in a good way of all of the opportunities that were available to me. And there were a lot of opportunities that I had to get my shit together, um, even as a young person. But uh, due to uh, my decision making and my low uh, uh, self esteem, I uh, continue to, to do certain things, um, that were, uh, problematic and destructive towards my community and, and, and really brought shame on my community and, and my family, right. Based on, on my decisions. 
right? And again, well, for the self-esteem, it says that is in, that it is indispensable to normal and healthy development, right? And because I had that low level of self-esteem, um, my, my development was stunted, um, not because of my conditions, but because of my thinking, my thought process, right? And, and now um, we, th that, that thought process is actually promoted. Um, and then uh, it says it has, uh, that it has survival value, right? It has survival value. And what it means by survival value is because when we, when we uh, have a healthy level of self-esteem, right? When hard times and uh, uh, problems happen, we feel more confident that uh, we feel more confident that we will be able to get past it, right? We 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 uh, in, internalize the the phrase "this too shall pass," right? In in the recovery communities, like uh, twelve step recovery communities, like AA, NA, and uh, 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 other, uh, uh, social model recovery programs, as well as in religious circles, you know, people will use that, that phrase, uh, this too shall pass. Right. And, and it's, and it's generally used when, when a difficult time arises and they're having a hard time getting through it. So it's a way to remind themselves that even though I'm going through Even though I'm going through a problem, it's not going to last forever, right? This too shall pass, right? This problem, this hard time, this difficulty that I'm going through will pass, right? I will get over this. I will get past this. It's not the end of the story. It's not the end of my life, right? And we have to believe that, right? We have to believe that there are cases of, of, of people with uh, terminal illnesses where doctors have predicted um, how long the people have had to live. And the people who accepted that, right, accepted uh, 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 who have, rather than to use the word accepted, that agreed with what the doctor said as being true, um, they generally perished close to whatever was predicted, right? And they, because they expected to perish, but there are other people who were told the same thing, right? That they had a certain time to live or told that they would never walk again because they were, let's say a quadriplegic or something like that. And, and these people, uh, 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 they accepted what their condition was, but they didn't agree with or accept that what the doctor said was true, right? They didn't accept that they would never walk again. They, they didn't accept that they were going to die in, in a certain amount of months, right? I mean, except they were going to die because we all will die, right? We don't get out of life alive. But they, they believed that they could overcome that illness and they did, right? And, and it was their, their, their confidence in their competence, right? Their, their self-efficacy, their self-esteem that motivated them. And, and again, they didn't just believe they were going to overcome it and just sit there and wait till they overcame it, right? They did certain things, certain uh, exercise. If it was told that they would never walk again, right? They began to, to engage in physical therapy to help them uh, 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 to be able to walk again. And in most cases, it wasn't just that they began to, that they were able to walk again. Some of them, uh, uh, you know, ran marathons and, and perform other things. I, right now I couldn't run a marathon. Matter of fact, I don't have a whole lot of endurance. I ain't even about to run two or three blocks. Right. Um, and I have both, you know, both legs and never been paralyzed or any other thing other than I would say laziness that prevents me uh, from being able to run long distance. Right. So, but these people had these issues where they were again, paralyzed, or you have people that have lost limbs, right. And they have prosthetic limbs and they, uh, 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 enroll in like, uh, competitions and stuff like that. And, and, and they succeed not because somebody's letting them win, right. They overcome their adversities. Right. 
And again, it is they, their level of self-esteem that helps them to, to have the motivation to take the necessary actions for them to be successful, right? This is the important thing about self-esteem, right? So in one case, you know, we can have, uh, again, like these young people that uh, did these horrific uh, uh, things uh, to these people um, could lead us to be motivated to do things like that, or we could have a, a level of self-esteem that motivate us to do things that is going to help us uh, to be or continue to be successful. And, and from the book, it says, it says, when self-esteem is low, our resilience in the face of life's adversities is diminished. We crumble before the vestitudes that a healthier sense of, of self could vanquish. We are far more likely to succumb to a tragic sense of our existence and to feelings of impotence. We tend to be more influenced by the desire to avoid pain than to experience joy. Negatives have more power over us than positives. We do not believe in ourselves, neither in our efficacy nor in our goodness. The universe is a frightening place. Right. And so to me, this is the message. This is actually the message, right, that we get um, in the media. Right. This is pretty much what people are told. Right. Your condition, your socioeconomic status, your e ethnicity, uh, systemic racism, all these things you cannot possibly uh, win. Right. These things are against you and you're not going to be able to win. They're not going to let you win. Right. My message is that you don't need anyone to let you do anything. Right. You can do it. Right. You're stronger than that. And so, again, it says when when self-esteem is low, our resilience in the face of life's uh, adversities is diminished. So our resilience, you know, the ability to bounce back. Right. In the face of life's adversities, in the face of hard times is diminished, meaning it is an impaired. Right. It is lessened. So we are not able to bounce back as easy because we have this diminished capacity uh, to function. It says we crumble before the vestitudes uh, that a healthier sense of self could vanquish. So. We, we crumble before these hard times, right? Before the hard times that a healthier self-esteem could help us to vanquish. So if we had a healthier self-esteem, right, we could get rid of, right, these hard times. We could get past. We could overcome. We could be able to internalize this too shall pass, right? We are far more likely to succumb to a tragic sense of our existence and to feelings of impotence, right? We are uh, likely to succumb to a tragic sense of our existence, right? And, and, and that's exactly what it's saying. A tragic, uh, succumb to a tragic sense of our existence. We end up accepting that we are just victims, that we cannot succeed in life, that when we are uh, engaged in criminal activity and doing things uh, to harm our community. That's that's just the way that we are, and uh, and it is um, just the way we're gonna be. That we can't change, right? Uh, we tend to be more influenced by the desire to avoid pain uh, than to experience joy, and this is a big deal. Right. And the next sentence, I'll read it because I think it goes along with it. Uh, negatives have more power over us than positives. So, again, these two sentences, I believe, are so important. And I believe that we should internalize the messages of these two sentences every day. So we tend to be more influenced by a by the desire to avoid pain than to experience joy. Negatives have more power over us than positives. And so what that means is that, uh, and, and matter of fact, I'll use myself as an example because, um, you know, I mentioned I had a, a, a criminal history, 
and I then that I uh, uh, went to prison, you know, uh, for 21 years, served 21 years in prison, and that um, that I did uh, certain things that led me to do a lot of time in prison, and so uh, uh, living the way that I did, I had to uh, face certain consequences for the things that I did, um, and and uh, facing those consequences were based on the decisions. Uh, uh, based on the decisions that I made. And when I decided to stop doing the things that I was doing, it wasn't because I felt that I was a good person and that I wanted to help uh, the community or that I wanted to really help anyone, right? Initially, right? I, I stopped doing the things that I did because I no longer wanted to face the consequences. Again, I was serving a life sentence. There was no guarantee that I was ever going to get out of prison. Um, I only got out because I uh, uh, start filing legal work in court against the uh, parole board. I have a video on that as well. Um, and uh, and I was able to to, to secure my freedom, uh, excuse me, my freedom by performing certain actions. But I I changed to avoid the consequences, to avoid the negative. So it was the the negative consequences that motivated me to make a change. It wasn't the fact that I could be, I could actually be successful in life and, 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 and be able to create wealth and riches for myself. Right. I didn't have, uh, uh, something in front of me that I was really looking forward to. I just had the, the consequences and we need in our life, we need both. We need, um, I guess you could say, uh, 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 a bear uh, behind us and a diamond in front of us. And and one of the ideas, and I started thinking about this idea from listening to some videos from a, a individual. He's a, 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 a psychologist who uh, has a lot of YouTube videos. He's a lot of people consider him to be very controversial based on uh, the, the topics that he talks about. Uh, his name is uh, 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 Jordan Peterson. Uh, but um, but something that he said kind of gave me uh, or, or, or similar to this that kind of gave me the idea. And it wasn't in these words. Right. But it was a, a similar idea. Uh, uh, so having a bear behind you and a diamond in front of you. Right. So the bear behind you are the consequences, the negative things, the things that you don't want to return to. So for each one of us, it might be different for me. It's going to be. Uh, the consequences associated with my criminal activity, with the criminal lifestyle that I was living, uh, 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 not having money, um, not having uh, a direction in life, you know, many different things. For some of you, it's going to be uh, not wanting to return to poverty, uh, uh, not wanting to return to a, a abusive relationships or whatever the case may be. But we also need something in front of us that we're striving towards something. Right. We want to be moving towards something. Right. Because if you again, we don't want to uh, face the consequences for the things uh, that we're uh, uh, that we're done. Right. So, yeah, we want to get away from that. But if that's all that we do, then we will just stay stuck in one place and we'll never try to make progress in our life. We need to have goals that we are looking forward to accomplishing something. Right. So as long as you're looking forward to accomplishing something, it keeps you moving in a forward motion and you have to do that. So you have to remember that everything is continuing to move. Right. So even if you're standing in one place, right, if you're when you stand in one place or you stay in in, let's say, whatever condition that you're in, you're actually not staying in the same place. You're literally moving backwards. The reason why you're moving backwards is because everything else is moving forward. If you don't believe me, think about if you've been making, let's say, the same amount of money for 20 or 30 years. You've been making the exact same income for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years or whatever. Right now, look at what you can buy with that same amount of money. Right. I, rem uh, uh, I remember a conversation I had with my father where he uh, talked about him uh, uh, making, I think it was $38 a month or something like that, right? And uh, and my family, ne they've never made a lot of money, period. 
Um, but you have to make $38 a month. And uh, with that $38 a month, uh, he was paying for uh, the, you know, the place where the family was living. And this is well before uh, I was born. But the place where he was living, uh, you know, the car he was driving and, you know, all of his necessities, right? With some money left over, to, you know, to get something to drink, you know, alcohol, or whatever to drink, right? $38 a month. Right now, I can't fill up my tank of gas, uh, my tank with gas for $38, right? I may get a half a tank, right, for $38. He was literally living and making $38 a month, right? So if you're, if you are staying in the same place, you are literally moving behind because everything else is moving forward. So you want a goal in front of you that you are moving towards something that you're going to accomplish that's going to help you to have a better life than you have now, right? And if you don't have that goal, then you will get stuck in, in, in complacency and in your comfort zone of being wherever you're at. You, you won't want to move forward. And it will be scary for you to make a forward move. You won't want to, uh, let's say, start a business because you're going to be worried about possibly going broke, right? And I understand. I understand that, right? Um, I'm accumulating right now a lot of debt, right? Trying to uh, uh, work with my business ideas, right? I have to do a better job at, at uh, uh, marketing. Obviously need to create a better business plan, but I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to continue until I succeed or I die, right? But I'm going to continue doing something. I'm going to continue to have something in front of me that I'm trying to accomplish, right? So I can have a better life, right? My self-esteem tells me that I can succeed. And the only reason that I have not uh, uh, succeeded, uh, to the extent that I want to yet is because I'm just not there yet. I have other things that I need to learn in the process and in my development of moving forward. Right. And you do want to do those things. You want to develop a good foundation for success, right? Uh, if you're talking about creating and generating wealth for yourself, you want to have a foundation uh, uh, of a uh, wealthy mindset, right? Because if you have a poor mindset, right? Even if you get rich, you'll never be wealthy because you will soon be broke, right? A lot of people, we have a lot of people that have became rich from hitting the lottery, for example, right? Many of those people that became rich from hitting the lottery never became wealthy, right? They were never able to really, um, I won't say, I shouldn't say able, because they were able, but they chose not to, right? They didn't invest their money uh, in something that was going to continue to generate income and wealth for them and their future generation. They went and spent their money on a bunch of bullshit that would make them look good. And then they ended up broke a few years later, right? So you went from millions of dollars to literally nothing, right? And so it don't make any sense. And I don't, call these people stupid because, um, you know, if I really think about it and I'm honest about it, if I would have hit the lottery, uh, when I was younger and had those millions of dollars, I would have been one of those people, right? Because I would have been buying a bunch of fancy shit, fancy car, big ass house. I would have did some good things for my family, but I would have bought and spent the money on a bunch of liabilities rather than assets that could help me to continue to earn money, right? So again, you want that goal in front of you that you're moving towards something and you want that thing behind you that keeps you from going backwards, that keeps you from going back to the things that you used to do that led you to be in the conditions that you were in, right? Um, for a long time when I was in prison, um, I felt that uh, the reason why I, uh, one of the reasons why I was in prison and that I had been to juvenile hall and juvenile placement and constantly getting locked up as a juvenile because I was still a juvenile when I got the case, right? I was 17 years old. Um, you know, a case that, you know, it got me a life sentence, right? Um, the reason why I felt that I was in there for a long time was because the police kept fucking with me. You know, the law enforcement, they were always on my ass or whatever, right? 
And uh, at some point I had to come to the determination that um, the reason that I was in there was because of decisions that I made. And even the reason that the law enforcement kept fucking with me, if I want to use that term, was because of the decisions that I was making and the way that I conducted myself and the way that I acted and responded towards them. Right. I began to bring myself out of the victim mentality. Right. And so does that mean that my mind uh, right now, if everything is just all good and uh, I only think positive thoughts and all that, like, no, right. Not even close. Right. I uh, got into uh, anger management. Right. I'm certified for anger management and, and uh, domestic violence and uh, substance abuse counseling. Um. And uh, I got into these things, right, because of my issues, the way that I think, my anger issue, which was the, the biggest uh, thing for me, uh, one of the biggest things for me was anger issues, right? <clears throat> I was a very uh, uh, violent individual, and my, my thoughts, um, if you did something to me, offended me, uh, especially put your hands on me, my thoughts would it, uh, almost immediately uh, goes directly to a, 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 a violent resolution, right? I would want to resolve it uh, violently. And uh, and even now, right, I don't act on the thoughts, but if you do something to me, especially if you put your hands on me, uh, well, if you put your hands on me, can't really say uh, how that's going to go, but, uh, but even, you know, saying things a certain way or or, or, or certain things, sometimes I will feel a certain way about it. And my mind sometimes will go according to that old mindset, right? But I don't act on those things because I know now that I can choose not to act on those things. And I believe now that if I react to you every time you offend me, then I am literally giving you control over me, right? And my self-esteem tells me that I can choose to control myself, right? Uh, you know, so, so again, so that sentence where it says we tend to be more influenced by the desire to avoid pain than to experience joy. Negatives have more power over us than positives is, in my opinion, a, a definition of the reason that I changed. Because again, I wanted to avoid the consequences. And many of us, um, or even some, some of you that are uh, working on yourself, maybe you're in recovery for uh, uh, substance abuse uh, uh, or, or uh, uh, just trying to stay out of prison or whatever. And so you're doing certain things and you're not you know, using drugs and, you're, and you are staying out of uh, uh, prison, but you're not really uh, trying to move forward, right? And uh, because, uh, you know, you're staying out of prison, you're not using drugs because, again, you don't want the negativity that comes along with that. But you're not motivated by the positives. So when, you, when we're motivated by the positives, that's something that's going to continue to pull us forward. Right. So when we talk about, uh, let's say, sociology, for example, um, and you talk about, uh, let's say, the sociological reasons for people immigrating uh, excuse me, immigrating to another country, uh, they, they talk about it in terms of push and pull factors, right? The, the push factors are the negative things in their own country that affect them in such a way to cause them to want to leave that country. The pull factors are those things in the country that they're going to that makes it desirable for them to go to that particular country and, and to want to start a new life in that country, the pull factors and the push factors. So this idea of the bear behind us and the uh, uh, diamond in front of us is, is, is similar to that, with, right? The bear behind us are the push factors, right? They're pushing us away from the, the negative behaviors and the criminal activity that we have engaged in in the past that caused us to suffer uh, negative consequences. The pull factors are the goals and objectives that we set for ourselves that are uh, 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 telling us that if I'm able to accomplish this thing or when I accomplish these things, then I will 
uh, be able to have wealth for me and my family and be able to continue to help and, and, and provide for my family and to benefit my community and, and my society, right? It's pulling me towards uh, something uh, good, right? And uh, so those, those are the push factors and, and uh, the pull factors, right? And, and again, that's exactly what these two sentences are saying. And I know the sentences didn't say push and pull, uh, push and pull, right? It used negative and positive. But if we look at the meaning of what's being said, that is exactly what it is saying. And then it says, if we do not believe in ourselves, neither in our efficacy nor in our goodness, the universe is a frightening place. And so that's why um, uh, going and some of us, um, uh, some of you that may even some of you that may be listening to this video, you are more intimidated going to a job interview than you are uh, having a knife fight with somebody on a prison yard. You're more intimidated by going to a, a, a job interview or asking for a loan for your business, right, or trying to get a business line of credit than you are with standing face to face and having a shootout uh, with a rival gang member, right? You rather stand there and uh, shoot at that rival gang member than to uh, uh, ask for a business loan, right? That generates more fear in you to, to ask for help than it does um, to risk your life um, in a gunfight or in a knife fight on a yard. You'll literally raise your hand and volunteer, right? to uh, uh, get somebody off the yard, right? That may be messed up or whatever, to get somebody off a prison yard, but it's hard for you to go to a job interview, right? It, it, it's, it's hard for you to, uh, let's say, try to write a business plan or, or ask for help to write a business plan, right? So uh, our values are mixed up and it's not due to, the government. It's not due to systemic racism. It's not due to our socioeconomic status, right? Now, are these, do the, uh, uh, are these things possibly contributing factors to this mentality that we have? Sure. Yeah, they are. They are contributing factors, but contributing factors are not determinate, determining, necessarily determining factors, right? The determining factors for our success and our failures are the decisions that we make. And we have to take responsibility for that, good or bad, right? I take responsibility for the things that I've done wrong in my life. I take responsibility for the consequences I have to face. I take responsibility for the decisions that I made. I take responsibility for the fact that, that I'm not, uh, at this point, successful in life because of the decisions that I chose to make uh, in my past. And I don't blame in any way, shape and form uh, my conditions in life. And I could use them because I had some of the same conditions or similar conditions that uh, uh, a lot of people promote as the reason why people are not successful. But I know looking at my situation and my conditions that I had so many opportunities even while I was, let's say, getting incarcerated, right? Uh, opportunities to go to school and educate myself when people like, uh, let's say, my parents or grandparents uh, didn't have the same opportunities to, to safely go to school and educate themselves and, uh, and to, uh, and to uh, uh, maybe st start and or run a successful business, right? And you had a lot of people in those eras that did educate themselves and did go to school. Even some people that were even in slavery, right? When they were still slaves that educated themselves, that had more motivation to educate themselves than we do now. And, and, and they were doing it under the threat of death, right? They could have been killed just for learning how to read, but they still learned to educate themselves and they educated their community. Right. And, uh, 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 and we, Right. We don't have any excuses, but we continue to make excuses and we continue to accept messages from people who are creating uh, a case for our for our failure. Right. They're creating a case to prove why we have no choice but to fail. Right. And I uh, would be considered, again, as a sellout 
because I don't accept the victim mentality and I'm creating a, a case that that success is a choice that you are strong enough uh, to succeed, that you have the ability um, to succeed, right? With or without other people helping you, it would be more, uh, let's say easier if, if you have assistance, but it's not necessary, right? But again, I'm wrong and I'm a sellout because I say that you can be successful, that you are bigger than racism. You're bigger than your socioeconomic status. You're bigger than, uh, 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 you know, uh, anybody that would want to discriminate against you. Right. And, and again, I'm not naive to think that, uh, the, 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 the government, the politicians and everybody in society is, is for you and that racism has ended and everything is all good. Right. I'm not that naive to believe something like that. I'm just saying, uh, as it relates to my success, it don't matter. Right. It don't matter. It, it matters that it, it is affecting people, but it don't matter um, as to where, whether I'm going to uh, become and be successful because I'm going to make the decisions that are going to lead me to be successful. And I'm going to be uh, uh, the author of my success regardless if somebody helped me or don't help me. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to stop the video here because it's uh, kind of a long video. I will continue with this series uh, in another video. Uh, if you gain anything from the video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, share the video with other people. I really do need subscribers. I barely got uh, pretty much any, any uh, uh, subscribers. Um, and, and I know how I, I, you know, and I probably could increase them if I uh, 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 talk about, you know, my experiences in, in uh, prisons and, and uh, due to uh, uh, prison stories. Right. But I'm not I'm not going to do it. Um, and I have nothing against it. I actually watch a lot of those channels. I really um, I actually enjoy some of the content, uh, some of those uh, uh, creators. Uh, that 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 uh, create some of the content. I think uh, they have a, a a good message for. Um, and again, I don't know their intentions, but I think the message uh, for young people being able to see the problems of getting involved in certain things, whether uh, gangs in or in or and or out of prison, uh, criminal activity and stuff like that. I think is is very positive uh, for the children, even if the the message or the the, the uh, the topics happen to be negative. Um, hopefully it educates the, the young person to learn that um, they should go another way. Um, and, and I would even like to think of myself as the, the what's next. Um, because again, I look at the, uh, a lot of the, the, uh, the prison channels that talk about uh, the prison experiences as a uh, diversion type thing, which is a good thing. Uh, a diversion from uh, uh, getting involved in, in those type of activities um, and, and why uh, young people should not do that. And I would like to uh, create a, uh, a community, a social media community, and, and provide content to be the what's next, meaning, um, okay, uh, so don't get involved and in, in, in the criminal activity, the drug dealing, the gang activities, or uh, 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 going to prison and doing all these things, right? But if I, if I don't get involved in that, then what? What do I do, right? How, how do I uh, uh, live my life? How can I be successful? Because for me, it seems like the only way that I'm going to get money if I sell dope or, or criminal activity, right? So I would like to be that, that, uh, that what, that's what's next message, right? And talk about what's next, right? What else can you do? Right. And, and, and the beginning, uh, right now I'm trying to set the foundation and the foundation is going to be the mindset that we have. We want to have, uh, a wealthy, uh, a wealth 
and and success mindset rather than a poor and a failure mindset. Uh, anyway, uh, if you like the video, please like and, and, and subscribe to the channel, uh, share the video, uh, push people to the channel. Uh, definitely uh, need the, the uh, uh, subscribers. Um, at some point, obviously, I would like to monetize uh, uh, and get, uh, uh, you know, uh, get money. But that's obviously not the reason that, I, that I'm making the videos because uh, I don't get a die. I actually spend money. I don't make money off any of this. Um, but uh, appreciate your support and uh, every little bit helps.